Welcome to this video on balls and boxes problems. We will talk about an ensemble of counting problems with a surprisingly wide range of complexity. We'll characterize the first half of these problems in this video and discuss the remaining cases in later ones. So let's get started. Here's our fundamental question. How many ways are there to place R balls into S boxes? Well, this is a bit of a trick question because I haven't given you enough information to come to a definitive answer. There are four questions that we must resolve before responding. And I want to give you some visual illustrations of these cases, but it's really hard to find interesting pictures of balls and boxes on the internet. Lucky for us, there are tons of pictures of cats and boxes, so let's talk about cats and boxes instead. The first two questions differentiate between identical and distinct objects. So first, can I tell the boxes apart from one another? And second, how about the balls? I mean, the cats. Do they look alike, or are they different? The next two questions are about the rules of placement. Am I allowed to put multiple cats in the same box, or am I limited to at most one cat per box? And am I allowed to skip a box and leave it empty, or must every box get at least one cat? So there are actually 16 different balls and boxes problems. In this video, we will resolve four of these 16. The you try problem at the end of the video will ask you to resolve three more of these problems. The remaining nine balls and boxes problems will be addressed in future videos. Here's the first class of balls and boxes problems that we will consider. We will assume that the boxes are distinct, which means we can tell them apart before we start placing the balls. Second, the boxes are allowed to be empty. So we are allowed to have unused boxes at the end of the placement process. Here is a really nice way to think about our balls and our boxes. The boxes are distinct, so we have box number one, box number two, and so on. So let's line up our boxes in a row, just like a row of lockers. And what about the balls? When we have identical balls, we will model them with ping pong balls. We cannot tell one ping pong ball from another. And when we have distinct balls, we will model them with pool balls. These balls each have a unique number appearing on them. Let's resolve the four balls and boxes problems shown on this slide. The boxes are distinct and they are allowed to be empty. But we still have two choices to make. Are the balls identical or distinct? And is repetition allowed? In other words, can we place multiple balls in the same box? And I will note here that the term repetition always refers to the boxes and not to the balls. This is because a ball can only go in one location. Meanwhile, a location, or box, can be used multiple times. First, let's talk about the no repeated boxes case. So every box is either empty or gets exactly one ball. If we are placing R ping pong balls into S boxes, then I must simply tell you the locations that I chose. In other words, I must choose a subset of boxes of size R and there are s choose r ways to do this. Now, what if we are placing r pool balls into s boxes? This is equivalent to creating a sublist of the boxes. In other words, I must choose a sublist of size r from a set of size s. There are s list r ways to do this. Now let's allow for repetition. So I can put more than one ball in a box. When I'm placing pool balls, the answer is s to the r. This is because each ball has s possible locations. By the product principle, there are s to the r ways to place these r balls. The last problem is a little sneakier, placing ping pong balls into distinct boxes when repetition is allowed. The answer is r plus s minus 1, choose r, and I will explain why in the next few slides. Let's start by looking at a particular example. I want to place eight identical balls into five distinct boxes. Repetition is allowed. And this picture shows one possible configuration. What I'm going to do is to start erasing some of the lines of this picture, but I need to preserve the information about where the balls are placed. The first thing I'll do is erase the left and right sides. I don't need them to know where the balls are. And next, I'll erase the ground. That horizontal line didn't carry any information. Now I'll get rid of some of the white space, and I will shrink down the dividers a little bit. And what is left 
is a series of zeros and ones. There are eight zeros. They correspond to the balls. And there are four ones. They correspond to the four dividers that I need to separate the five boxes. And here is what is important. This series of eight zeros and four ones is equivalent to the original balls and boxes configuration. So placing eight identical balls into five distinct boxes is the same as arranging eight zeros and four ones. And the number of ways to arrange these zeros and ones is 12 choose eight. I need to tell you where to put those eight zeros. Of course, this is also equal to 12 choose four. This corresponds to telling you where to put the four ones. We can generalize this argument. Placing R identical balls into S distinct boxes, where boxes can be empty and repetition is allowed, is the same as arranging R zeros and S minus one ones. The number of ways to do that is R plus S minus one, choose R, or equivalently, R plus S minus one, choose S minus one. In summary, we have resolved four alls and boxes problems. These are the four cases where the boxes are distinct and the boxes are allowed to be empty. Finally, let's note that when boxes cannot repeat, we must have r less than or equal to s. Meanwhile, when they can repeat, there is no algebraic constraint between r and s. This brings us to the U-try problem. We are still interested in distinct boxes, but now we will require that boxes cannot be empty. Now, when we can't repeat boxes, this means that r is equal to s. We must have the same number of balls as boxes. And when we are allowed to repeat boxes, we must have r greater than or equal to s. We need to have at least as many balls as boxes. And now it's your turn. You should be able to come up with the formulas for three out of the four problems on this list. I want you to do so. Meanwhile, one of the four problems on this slide is much more complicated than the other three. By the process of elimination, you'll find that problem. Just mark it as the hard one. Don't try to find a formula. We will tackle that one in a future video after we have developed another counting tool called inclusion-exclusion. Good luck and have fun.